In this video tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, calculating probabilities using combinations. And there's two examples here, one on this page and one on the next. Uh, in the first one, it says in the Lotto Max lottery, you pick seven numbers from 1 to 49 for any ticket. And uh, you get uh, three tickets for $5. So the first question asks, uh, how many ticket combinations are there? And this is a combination question, not a permutation question, because it doesn't matter what order you want the numbers to be. It's still the same ticket. Okay, so changing the order of the same seven numbers does not make a different ticket. So the number of ticket combinations would be 49 choose 7. There's 49 choose 7 possible tickets. And 49 choose 7 would be 49 factorial divided by 7 factorial. And then also 49 minus 7 is 42 factorial. And so two different ways you can evaluate that is you can divide out the factorials like this and get 85,900,584. Or if you have a calculator with a combination function on it, you will get, of course, exactly the same thing. So there are just under 86 million, 85,900,584 possible Lotto Max tickets. So there's a lot of them. Question B says, if you spend $1,000 on tickets and got all different tickets, what's your chance of winning? So remember, you, for $5, you get 3. So if we took the 1,000 and divided it by 5, 1,000 divided by 5 is 200. So you buy 200 groups of tickets here. And each one, you get 3. So 200 times 3 is 600. So for $1,000, you would get 600 tickets. So your chance of winning would be 600 out of the 85,900,584. So we divide that you don't have much of a chance to win. It's 0 0.00006985. So if you wrote that as a, uh, as a percent, uh, if we rounded this to seven here and move the decimal place here, it would still be 0.00007% chance. Because this number is so small, what's often done in this kind of a situation is if you take that number that we just divided and find its um, um, reciprocal, uh, power of negative 1. You get 143,167.6. So this approximately means there is approximately, and I rounded the 67.6 to 68, there is approximately a one chance in 143,168 of winning. That's approximately what the probability would be. So it's still, it's not a very good chance. Even though you spend $1,000, you still don't have much of a chance to win. One more example using uh, combinations to calculate some probabilities. In this example, it says a graduate, graduation committee of four people, so that's the size of the group, is to be created from 10 staff members at this school and the student council, which has six students. Uh, everyone is equally likely, equally likely to be chosen. So for example, maybe they're throwing the 16 names in a hat and pulling them out. Everybody has the same chance to be chosen. And the first question says, what is the probability the committee will have equal representation for both staff and students? So uh, we're choosing four people, so that would mean two staff and two students. So the, we need to figure out the, the size of the sample space. So there's 16 people, and we're selecting four. So this is 16 choose four. It's a combination question because it doesn't matter, matter what order you pick out the four names. It's the same group of people. So that's why it's a combination. So 16 choose 4 works out to 1820. If we want to bring the calculator over. So 16 choose 4 is 1820. You also could do 16 factorial divided by, and we would have 4 factorial. And then 16 minus 4 is 12. So we'd also have a 12 factorial in the denominator here. And of course, it also gives us 1,820. So that's the size of the sample space. So our event here is that there are two staff and two students. So if we call A the, the event of that happening, then we're, select, we're choosing two students from the 10 staff 
And for each of those ways, you can do the staff part times there's six choose two ways to select the two students. So 10 choose 2, and I'm using the, the shortcut for evaluating combinations. There's two numbers, so we go 10 times 9, two numbers, and divided by 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial equals 2, so I can just put a 2 here. 6 choose 2 would be 6 times 5. Again, two numbers divided by 2 factorial, or just 2. Uh, this is 90 divided by 2 is 45, and this would be 30 divided by 2 is 15. 45 times 15 is 675. So that's the number of ways you could have two staff and two students. So the probability of getting two staff and two students would be 675 out of the size of the whole sample space, 1820, which works out to be about 37%. So the chance the committee will have an equal represent representation from staff and students is about 37%. Okay, B says, what are the chances there will be more students than staff in the committee? Now, more students and staff in the committee would mean there's either three students or four students. That's the only way there can be more. So now, three students would be three students and one staff. Don't forget that there has to be a staff member. Okay, There has to be four people. So if there's three students, there is one staff on it too. So there'd be 10 choose one way of selecting the one staff member. And for each of those 10 ways times, there would be six choose three, three ways of picking the three students. Plus, it could also be all students, which means that you're selecting no staff members from the 10, and all four of them are from the students. So, 10 choose 1 would be uh, 10 divided by 1, which is 10. 6 choose 3 would be 6 times 5 times 4. Remember, there's three numbers, so 6 times 5 times 4 over 3 factorial. 10 choose 1 is actually 1, and 6 choose 4 would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. Remember, that 4 means there's 4 numbers to product, we're starting at 6, and over 4 factorial. Now, 10 divided by 1 is 10, and 3 factorial is actually equal to 6, so uh, this, this is 6, this is 6, so I can divide those out. It goes into 1 time. And also over here, 6 times 4 is 24, so 4 factorial is 24, so that 4 factorial will divide out with those. Okay, So I really have 10 times 5 times 4, that's 20, times 10 is, is 200, and 5 times 3 is 15, so I have a plus 15 on the end here. So that's a 215. So there's 215 ways of there being more students than staff. So the probability of three students or four students would be 215 out of the 1820, which works out to be about 0.118. So there's about a 12% chance that the committee will have more students than staff. And that's the end of the video.